What's up everybody, I'm Duncan D Deep and welcome back to another in-depth monster guide for Monster Hunter World. Today we're going to be recovering by far the most requested monster from the previous video, and that is the Elder Dragon, Kirin. Kirin is a monster that a lot of hunters struggle with because he's so different from everything you've encountered up until this point. Other monsters that are as small as Kirin generally don't hit too hard and have very low HP stats, whereas Kirin is an Elder Dragon and therefore has the attack stat to back up that status. His attacks are incredibly powerful and his thunder attacks seem to come out of absolutely nowhere, whomping on the hunter with thunder blight, stuns and huge amounts of damage. It doesn't help that for new hunters his lightning also seems completely random and hunters spend half their time worrying that a thunderbolt is about to strike them out of nowhere. Hopefully this guide will help you guys get to grips with Kirin and realize that he's really not as hard as a lot of people think he is. He's one of the easier Elder Dragons if you use the right weapon and fight him in the right way and once you get to grip with his attacks they're actually pretty easy to predict. As always with these guides, we're going to go through Kirin's strengths and weaknesses. We're going to go through every single move that Kirin can use. And then I'm going to give you some basic strategy and advice on how to defeat Kirin. Starting with his weak points, well, his only weak point is his head and horn. That is all that you will be able to hit any kind of real damage against. His hide is incredibly tough and resists damage all over. You can do a small amount of damage to his mane, but it really isn't that significant. And his legs, neck and tail will take all almost no damage whatsoever. This issue is made even worse when Kirin activates its lightning aura. This is a separate mechanic to rage and it works much like Nergigante's spike regeneration, Teostra's flame shield, or Kushala Deora's wind shield. The electric aura will protect Kirin's body everywhere except for his head and horn and will reduce damage to zero from a lot of attacks and to almost zero from everything else, forcing you to hit his face and horn. While this aura can be sealed away with the Elder Seal on your weapon, it's not really worth it unless your weapon is a raw type weapon which the dragon element is just a bonus on, as Kirin's dragon weakness is only one star. If you do want to use an elemental weapon where elemental damage is your focus, feel free to use water or ice as they both have two star power, but I really recommend that fire is your element to go to. Fire element will do a lot more damage to Kirin than anything else. With a three star weakness to fire, if you hit him in the head with your fire weapons, you'll be doing a large amount of damage. The one thing you don't want to do under any circumstances is bring a thunder weapon against Kirin. Thunder will do literally no damage to any point on Kirin including his face and horn so your thunder element on your elemental weapon will be completely wasted. When it comes to status, Kirin has a two-star weakness to sleep and blast, making it quite easy to sleep bomb him during the early stages of the hunt, and also makes blast weapons effective as a starting weapon for the hunt, as long as you know that as his blast resistance builds up throughout, you're going to want to switch over to an elemental weapon or a raw damage weapon later on. His poison weakness and his stun weakness are both one, meaning that stun weapons hitting the head, the stun is only really a bonus to the fact that you're hitting his one and only weak point, and for poison you can choose to poison him, but you're only going to be getting 10 damage per tick, and it's going to be quite difficult to actually get that poison to stick. Once again, just like Thunder, he is completely immune to paralysis, so if you bring a paralysis weapon, you are absolutely wasting your time. Now for the bit that's really going to help you out against Kirin, we're going to talk about his attacks. We're going to separate his attacks into two separate categories. He's got his physical moves, which are actually relatively low power, and his electrical moves, which are incredibly powerful and need to be watched out for. Kirin actually has quite a small selection of moves, so this shouldn't take you too long to learn. When it comes to physical moves, the first and most basic of Kirin's physical moves is the horn thrust. Kirin will lower his head and either thrust his horn upwards in place or move a short distance and then thrust his horn upwards. This is an easy attack to avoid. All you need to do is roll to the side as soon as Kirin lowers his head. While Kirin's small size might make it difficult to actually hit him, it makes small physical attacks like this way easier to avoid. The second of Kirin's physical moves is actually an upgraded version of this horn thrust in my opinion and that is his charge. He will lower his head and then paw the ground and charge a great distance forwards. His entire body becomes a hitbox during this animation but it's once again incredibly easy to avoid. As soon as he starts pawing the ground all you need to do is roll at a 90 degree angle to Kirin out of the way of the charge and then get ready to follow up the charge with a big attack on Kirin while he recovers from the animation. In order to prevent you from chilling out behind him, Kirin has a back kick attack. He will lift his front legs off the ground, then quickly lower them onto the ground, and then kick out his back legs in an upward motion. 
If this attack hits you, it will launch you a very long way, but it doesn't actually do a huge amount of damage. It will also stun you quite easily, and if you have Thunderblight on you, this is how you're going to be getting stunned and then comboed to death, so do watch out for this kick. The best way to avoid this is to try and stay at the front of Kirin, because you want to be hitting that head anyway, so what's the point of being behind his back legs where he takes almost no damage? The final attack in this physical category was difficult to know where to put it in either physical attack or electrical attack. When Kirin has no electric aura on him, this attack is just a zigzag jump with no lightning bolts where he will do damage if he lands on you during the zigzag. It will be a small amount of damage and a stumble knockback. If he has his electric aura, however, every single spot that he jumps to will create a lightning patch on the ground, which will be struck by lightning after a short time. This attack doesn't have a particularly distinct tell, as the entire attack is the tell, as he moves very slowly while jumping from point to point. Just make sure you're not where he lands, and you'll be absolutely fine. Moving on to Kirin's much more threatening thunder attacks, it's important to note that each of these attacks becomes more powerful when Kirin has his lightning aura. The first move is a lightning strike snipe. Kirin will create two to four spots of lightning in various patterns in front of it, which then quickly strike the ground, and it can be any distance between Kirin and yourself in front of Kirin. So he could put them right in front of him, or he could put them in a zigzag pattern all the way up to you, or he could create three lightning spots right at your feet from a great distance away. All of these thunderbolts are telegraphed by a glowing blue spot which appears on the ground 0.5 seconds before the thunderbolt hits. So, if you do see a glowing blue spot on the ground, be ready to roll away. This is the move that catches the most new players off guard. They don't expect it, it comes out of nowhere, it can land absolutely anywhere, and it does a tremendous amount of damage if it hits you. Keep an eye out for glowing blue spots and do not stand on them. That is the number one tip for Kirin. Our second lightning attack is going to be his walking or stationary random lightning bolts. Kirin will either walk around slowly or lift his head up in a winny animation, creating a random field of lightning bolts in a general area around it. Similar to the previous move, this will generate glowing spots on the ground, which will then be struck by lightning. So don't be fooled by Kirin walking around slowly, as it could be the end of your life. Kirin's third variation of the small circle lightning bolt attacks is his circle strike. Kirin will create a circle of the small round lightning points around itself at any distance. This can include no distance where he places all five circles on his own body. Just like the other two moves as well, you avoid them in the same way. Don't be standing on a glowing spot. That should be your mantra when fighting Kirin, so no matter what attack he is using, as long as you remember don't be standing on a glowing spot, you should survive the hunt and be able to take Kirin down. Moving on to Kirin's even more powerful lightning moves, we're going to talk about Kirin's giant lightning strike, where Kirin will create a giant field of glowing lightning on the ground. When this one strikes, it does even more damage than his smaller lightning bolts, but in return for that, it takes a little longer to strike. So while it is a lot scarier than his small lightning bolts, it's actually much easier to avoid. As before, don't be standing on the glowing spot, roll away, and you should be absolutely fine. Kirin's final thunder attack is his lightning line strike. Kirin creates a giant line of charged area, which will then strike out in a straight line across that entire area after one second. Kirin can create this line either parallel to the way it is facing, with itself being the origin point, or it can create it a short distance away, perpendicular to itself. Either way, it's the same as before, don't be standing on it, and you'll be absolutely fine. When Kirin has its aura, this attack will become much more devastating. Instead of one line, Kirin will create three for its triple line lightning strike. Once again, it can either be parallel or perpendicular to Kirin, so you can't even be sure which direction it's coming from. It will do a huge amount of damage, but it will still strike in the same amount of time as the regular line lightning strike. Something else to note is that these three lines appear slightly separated out from each other time-wise, and will then strike in the order that they appeared, which unfortunately can be any random order. So it's not always going to be the innermost then the outermost, or the outermost then the innermost, or left to right. You do not know which order they're going to appear, and they will strike at a random order. That's it for Kirin's moveset. That's all he has. He's got quite a small moveset. He just combos them together and chains them together in a devastating way. But so long as you don't get hit by one, you won't get hit by the others. So the real trick here is just don't get hit and hit Kirin till it dies. Since I've covered how not to get hit, it's time to cover how to hit Kirin until it dies. And I do want to start out by saying that while you can, of course, hunt Kirin with any of the 14 weapons in the game, a lot of weapons are a lot harder to use against Kirin than others. 
For example, if you're insisting on using a shielded weapon, don't use the gun lance on Kirin. It may seem like a good idea because you can easily shell it, even on its hide, even during electric aura to get the full shell damage, but it's slow and it takes a long time to sheathe and it's not very mobile when it's unsheathed, so you're going to spend all of your time sheathing your weapon, running up to Kirin and getting one, maybe two shells off before Kirin bounces off in another direction. If you want to use a large shielded weapon, you're better off with the regular lance because you should run an evade lance set with evade distance maxed out so that when Kirin hops away, you can just evade towards him. If he jumps even further away, you still don't have to sheath the lance as the lance has that fantastic charge attack. In a similar way, the bow isn't very effective on Kirin. Arrows will utterly bounce off, doing zero damage if Kirin's aura is active. There is some spread on bow arrows when you fire them, and since you have to be so accurate and hit Kirin's head constantly, it's really not worth it if you miss even one of those arrows from each shot. And the Dragon Piercer is utterly useless, since Kirin is so small, it has so few hitboxes that it really doesn't take a huge amount of damage. The bow gun, on the other hand, does huge amounts of damage to Kirin if you can target its head, especially the light bow gun, which even with the slicing shot nerf does a huge amount of damage, especially since slicing shot still ignores the aura and goes straight through it doing full damage. If you want to hunt the Kirin using a slower, heavier weapon, I would recommend the hammer more than anything else. The main reasons for this are one, the two best hammers in the game have Elder Seal, which will get rid of that pesky aura for you at least once a hunt. And secondly, the hammer charge uppercut is a really good way to close distance with this highly mobile monster and get hits off on the head. If you manage to down Kirin, that big bang attack will also do a huge amount of damage. If you insist on using a great sword against Kirin, please note that you're almost never going to get a level three true charge off on Kirin. Go for the crit draw set. Don't even bother charging it. Just crit draw, sheath, repeat until the pony bites the dust. Remember to stay safe as not getting hit will save you more time overall when it comes to doing damage than getting off that one extra hit at the end of a combo. With small light weapons, the biggest issue is going to be reaching Kirin's head. I actually really like the sword and shield against Kirin as you can use that triangle and circle distance closing attack to do an uppercut which will actually do really good damage to Kirin's head if you're using the correct armor set with the Rathalos or Anjanath sword and shield. Unlike most monsters, when I can tell you for each weapon class the positioning in relation to the monster that you should be trying to have, with Kirin the positioning is always the same. He is so small that being in a certain position in relation to him is a moot point. You should be where you can hit the head, and all of his attacks are AoE and random, so just make sure you're not standing on a glowing spot and you should be absolutely fine. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it helped you guys in your quest to hunt the Kirins. If it did, please let me know down below in the comments and let me know what other monsters you would like to see me cover. I do intend on covering Teostra and Kushala, so keep your eyes open for those videos in the future, and I'll see you guys next time. All right then, guys, that's the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, you can click up here to see more videos of this type on my channel. If you want to check out something else a little bit different, then you can click down here. And if you want to see everything that I upload, you can click the subscribe button right here.